Welcome everyone, this is Sandman with 311 Griffins. Today I'm going to show you, hopefully, how to set up a Team Fortress 2 server that is joinable for your friends, um, but also has bots. So the server will be full um, at all times. When, some, when a human joins in, a bot will drop. Uh, when a human jumps out, a bot will jump back in. So um, what I'm not going to be showing you is how to port forward and set up um, you know all that stuff to make your your um, your server joinable through your router or your firewall. I'm not that good at that stuff. Um, I don't remember how I did the port forwarding, honestly. Um, so we're not going to talk about that. We're just going to focus on setting the actual server up. Um, it's also recommended that you use a computer other than the one that you're going to be playing on. Um, there's some problems that can arise if you're playing on the computer that the server's running on. In my case, I don't have the luxury of doing that. Um, so uh, I actually run it on my primary computer with the game and then other people join in uh, from within my network. I've also had a friend join in with, uh, you know, external to my network and um, the first time he had some issues with frame rates but we're not for sure why that was happening. Um, so anyway, this, this technically works. Um, there may be some bugs and things you have to sort out but uh, I'm just going to show you how to uh, set that up and give you some tips that um, I didn't really catch on the first time to hopefully make it easier. Uh, the first thing you want to do is open up a, an internet um, window, a browser, and you're going to go to this website, wiki.teamfortress.com forward slash wiki slash windows underscore dedicated underscore server. Um, you can also Google Team Fortress 2 dedicated server, and that's probably the first or second one that's going to pop up. Okay, we're going to install this on the C drive. Um, it's best to just follow the guide, um, which you guys can do on your own. But um, you know, like I said, I'm going to give some tips, and we're going to create a, sir, uh, a folder called HL Server. You can do that first if you want. You can do it after you download the Steam Command tool, whatever. First thing we're going to do: download and install Steam Command Zip. So you, you uh, download it, you open it, copy it and then you are going to go to this uh, this folder okay that you've created and you're just going to paste it into that folder and then you're going to double click it now I made a test folder here just so you can see what it looks like double click it run it it's gonna start downloading the the tools I'm not gonna let it do it because I've already got it and you are going to wind up with a lot of files in this folder in this HL server folder so that's exactly what we want. Let's set up our windows and we'll just we'll follow down through this. So you, we've unzipped that to see HL server. Next we're going to create a Steam command script. I'm going to go back to this one for a moment and I'm just going to delete all this stuff so I can so I can show you guys this. For this one, it's um, you'll notice it is a tf2 underscore ds dot txt. So it's just a regular text file. So you can right click and you can do new text document and you can just name it tf2 underscore ds dot txt. Make sure anytime you're setting up these files or um, typing anything that you um, type it exactly as it says it don't you know the the computer's got to know what to find and what to look for okay so let's open that up and let's just copy this stuff over paste it file save close all right i would ignore this part let's create an updating batch file um, it's going to be called update.bat and it's going to be in this same folder. Also make sure that you're checking the folders and that you're paying attention to which folder the different things go in. That's very important. Okay, now this one, if we right click and do new text file, it's going to be a text document. It's not going to work. So what we have to do is we have to open up Notepad and we have to just save this as make very certain you click this drop down box and click all files and then type update.bat that'll make it a bat file this is now update.bat all we gotta do is copy that text just like we did before paste it in there save it 
close it. Make sure this says Windows Batch File and it's named Update. If you if you don't do it the way I showed you, it'll be update.bat.txt and it'll just be a text file. All right, start the download update. So you're just going to run the update.bat. And what it's going to do is it's going to go grab all the files and it's going to update them. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close it. I've already got the files. And it, it takes a little bit. And like it says here, it may take a while because it's 5.8 gigs. Um, you may need to run it multiple times. Um, just make sure it's completely done. And it's going to also, you've, you've seen that it's, it started um, you know, downloading some files and things too. Um, or I think that comes from the update. I'm not sure which files come from which, but um, anyway. So now um, you are going to uh, once that's fully downloaded, we're going to create a file in our uh, called server.config in this folder. C H L server T F two T F config. Um, let's just go open up the one I've already created. Um, and there's a lot of files already in here and um, there might be so, some of these files have, have um, um, default files or, or example files which is very helpful because you can just copy stuff over. Um, okay so let's look at this server config. Okay, so here's our server config. Um, you can just copy this stuff here. Um, a lot of it's optional. Some of it you don't really need. You can see I've got some extra lines in here, but it, they do a good job of telling you what each line does. Um, like I said, I've got some other options in here that I'll talk about later. And this is very important here. If you want bots in your server, this is the best way I've found to do it. Um, otherwise, you have to go into your server um, type in this Archicon password, um, turn cheats on, add the bots, generate the navigation, blah blah blah. You don't necessarily have to generate the navigation but um, depending on the map. But then you've got to turn the cheats off and it really messes with the server and it makes it so that you can't get achievements and drops and things like that. So put that in here and it's just automatically done. Okay, so but really all you have to do is copy this stuff and then put those three lines in there. Um, and again, let me open that back up so you can see it. TF bot quota mode fill, TF bot quota 18, TF bot join after player 1. Okay, so next, create message of the day text and map cycle text. The good news is these are some that have defaults. So you can just copy this or you can just open this and save it as message of the day dot text except and the message of the day is just what pops up when the server is loading but in this case these are the only maps that I know of that are that already have navigation generated so if you're playing with bots you're gonna want to use these um, I'm sure there's a way to generate the navigation um, quicker and easier I haven't figured it out so copy mine if you want um, it works and next, map cycle text. Again, there's several options. There's a default, um, but we are only using the ones that have gen map um, that have navigation generated. Makes it a lot easier. Then you're going to do the pure server whitelist. Um, again, there's an example. I just copied it. I don't know a whole lot about this, and as long as your server is private, I don't know that it matters too much. As long as you know everybody that's coming into um, your server. Now we're going to create a file to run the server. Now I've done mine a little bit differently. I've already I've already done it, but you can just right click um, new um, <laughs> shortcut. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? I'm being dumb. Shortcut. I don't know what I was thinking there. And then you're going to browse to. Um, it's got a reference HL server TF2 SRCDS.exe. HL server TF2. That file right there. 
Okay, that's what you want to reference. I've already got mine. Let's look at the properties. Because it says set target to that, this is telling your game, um, you know, to start on this map and do this many max players, and you're going to set to start in HL server. Start in HL server, you'll notice that, um, that mine actually looks a little bit differently than that. I can't, I can't honestly tell you um, why mine looks that way. I don't remember <laughs> what I did. It works. That's what I do. And I actually have a different file. If I can remember where it is. Here we go. Okay, the TF bat. They might have changed their instructions since I've did it, but anyway, I have all this stuff in the TF bat. And I, um, one of the things I did is did plus random map, so it doesn't start on any given map. It starts on a random map. Um, we don't spend a lot of time in the server. It's not running all the time, so um, it's it's nice to have a random map, so we're not always starting on the same one every time. Um, sorry, so that's what how I've got it set up, and I don't know if they've changed instructions or what, but you can follow their instructions, or you can do it this way, and either one will work. Here's some other command options. Here's the, where I got the plus random map, um, and, and I don't even know what some of these things do. Um, so, there's also a link for dedicated server configuration that you can check out. It's got a lot of other good information. It's got some, some information about how to do cooler messages of the day um, and things like that. But um, basically what I've shown you is enough to get you uh, going with the server. Okay, to actually get the server running, just double click the shortcut that you used and it will start to launch. <clears throat> It takes a few minutes, and uh, the only thing you need to look out for is um, you need to make sure that um, when it gets done loading, it doesn't tell you that you need to update the server. If it does tell you that you need to update the server, just go into your folder and double-click the update batch file, and um, and and that'll take care of that. Um, it'll it'll take it a little bit to update, and then you'll be able to run it again. Um, but you'll have to close the server, update it, and then start it again. Um, of course, launch Team Fortress 2 in Steam, and and I will uh, see you in the game, and we'll <clears throat> we'll go over just how to get into the server. Okay, so once you're in the game, just go to Servers. Um, for me, I have to click LAN on the LAN tab and uh, sometimes you have to refresh it but you just select it and click connect and then type in the password and um, and then of course you wait for <clears throat> the um, game to load and it takes it a while to load the server uh, normal normal times um, that, that we're used to waiting to get into a server on uh, on Team Fortress 2 um, anybody else that's joining can do the same thing but uh, outside your firewall it might show up in um, a friends list, it might show up in the internet tab. I'm I'm not I'm honestly not for sure how it shows up to your friends that are outside your firewall or on the other side of your router. But um, anyway, th they'll load the same way. Type in the password, they'll load up. Um, once you're in the game, the uh, the first person who joins the game and picks a team will start generating the bot. So um, it'll it'll um, once you click continue. <clears throat> well, there's your there's your message of the day. Um, like we've got, like we set up. As soon as you join a team, you can see all the bots jumping in down here. So you'll select your class. It gives you the um, time period to wait for other players. So this. This is essentially uh, each time a server loads, it'll do this. When the server resets, it won't do this. Um, you won't have to wait for other players to join again. But um, when the server first begins, you'll have to wait a little bit. Um, 
anyway, that gives everybody a chance to jump in. One thing I will say is if you're trying to get in while the bots are spawning and you keep clicking a door to try to get in, it's gonna it's gonna be locked out as the as the uh, teams are evened out. And if you click it too many times while it's locked out, it's gonna boot you, and you're just gonna be stuck in spectator mode. So don't do that. Um, there's nothing wrong with waiting till all the bots are. Uh, uh, until all the bots are spawned, and then you can jump in and it'll kick the bot out, so no worries, just be patient, don't get yourself kicked out, you can rejoin if you do, so not too big of a deal. Alright guys, so, uh, thanks for watching, and enjoy.